Welcome back guys, it is upcycling time. Let's go ahead and get started. In today's video, we are going to be working on upcycling some of the items that I had that were left behind when we bought our house. That includes the bird bath out front that was a part of the landscaping and some metal pool like or garden outdoor hanging um, little animals that were rusty and crusty and almost ended up in the trash bin but I had a feeling that I could save them. So I'm going to show you how I gave both of the bird bath and these little metal animals uh, an upcycle. So we're going to start with the bird bath. So the bird bath is really cute. It's just a plastic. Um, it kind of untwists and comes apart and it's super cute, but it just needs a little bit of work. And I think it blends in a little bit too much with my background in landscaping. So I'm just wanting to freshen it up and brighten it up. And I'm going to show you how I did that. With this, I'm just going to start with giving it a good cleaning with some Dawn dish soap and some water. And I'm just going to wash everything down, rinse it off, and leave it out in the sun to dry. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to try to give it a bit of texture. I really love the design on it, but I'm going to end up just painting it white. And I don't want it to be too simple. So I'm going to be using some of the Rust-Oleum um, stone finish. So it'll give it this really nice texture on it. Um, this one, we was just in our garage so it's gonna be this grayish tone I think they have a couple different tones but that's not gonna matter because I'm gonna spray over it um, but yeah so we're just gonna use this to add some texture so I'm just gonna take it outside um, get everything laid out just as if you were gonna spray paint and I'm going to spray this all over and I'm just gonna do this until I get the texture that I want um, I didn't have to prep this um, bird bath any further um, it's in kind of a rough shape you can't really tell uh, but up close you can see the dings and scratches and everything but just be sure that you read on here the instructions on if your piece needs to be sanded or not um, and to make it stick so I did two rounds of this I did a nice um, healthy coat all over it one time let it dry for about an hour and I came back and did a second coat on it um, it's really hot here right now so it was able to dry really quickly and then after that um, I let it dry for a couple hours again before I was ready to move on to paint it now this stuff like I said it leaves like a texture but you do want to make sure it's fully dry um, because it is thicker than you know your normal paint so you want to make sure all the layers are dry completely um, and that there's nothing tacky or sticky or rubbery feeling that way you know that your paint is going to adhere and stick really well from there knowing that everything's dry um, as you can also see here i taped off where it twists on because this does leave texture i wanted to make sure that it didn't have any of that texture build up in the treads to where it wouldn't screw back on properly so i did use some painters tape and tape off the treads on both the top and the bottom um, once I was ready to paint, I just pulled out my Rust-Oleum 2X in white. I don't know which finish this is, probably matte if I know me. Um, and I am going to spray this up. This is the fun part. You've already added your texture. You can make this any color you want. I'm trying to keep it pretty neutral, but I do want to lighten it up. Um, I just feel like it would get really hot, like the water would get really hot and the birds wouldn't want to be in it if it was a dark color. And I want it to pop against the landscape. We're going to be doing um, like a darker gray black on our finishings on our house once we get to that step. So I just, like I said, I want it to pop out of the landscape a little bit more. That green just kind of blended. So I'm just going to spray it white. I think I ended up doing three coats on it um, to make sure that it's nice and has good full coverage. And then I let it sit out. I put it back out in the landscaping for a couple days before adding water. Super quick and easy way to fix up this cute bird bath, to let it pop off of the landscape and really make it look a little bit nicer out front. I did, um, thank you mama for letting me know that Home Depot had their mulch on sale over Memorial Day weekend. And so I was able to go pick up some mulch and put that out and pull the weeds and clean up the front of our landscaping as well, which was really great. So now it looks really good out front and I'm so happy and excited that I could just easily spray, <laughs> spray paint and change this up to make it look that much better out front so that we can make our curb appeal a little bit better. For the next round of things, these little metal animals are super cute, but they were in bad shape 
pretty bad shape. I almost just said toss them, but I didn't want to go buy new ones and I just really wanted to challenge myself and see if I could make them look new again. So I went to the store and I grabbed some Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. This is the one I got. It looks like it was around $9. Um, there's still quite a bit in the can and I'm going to try to fix these up. I started with giving them a nice good scrubbing, again some warm water and some Dawn um, and a sponge and then I also used a wire brush and I'm just using that to chip off any old paint, any loose rust and make sure I'm giving it a really good scrub. Now this wire brush scratched up like I did a really good job in getting in there and scratching it up real good um, but this does call for you to sand the area as well. So just make sure again, if you're gonna use something like this, that you're following the instructions on the can for what you're using. Um, so once I was done washing those up really good, getting rid of anything loose, any of those rust spots, scrubbing them really good, I let them dry really well to make sure that they were fully dry before I moved on. After that, I gave them all really good coats. I think I did two full, like, pretty healthy coats of this. Now this spray, um, this is black and it is almost like a rubber. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It's a paint obviously, but it's thicker and it has more of a rubbery feel than it would just a normal spray paint feel. Um, and the whole point of it, it says it instantly converts the rust um, into a paintable surface. So that's why I'm using this. I just, again, did two really healthy coats on the front and the back because I want to make sure the, the back doesn't rust out either. And then I let those dry. After that, I get to do the fun part. Um, I don't know. I didn't look to see if this comes in different colors or not. It didn't matter because I was going to paint it. So, um, I didn't look into that, but anyway, so I'm going to paint these up fun and make them look new again. So these were originally out by our pool deck. We found them kind of just, it looked like they just threw them under because they obviously are in bad shape um, and probably just forgot about them being there. So we found them and cleaned up and instead of tossing them, I just, again, want to give them a new life. So if you have one, you know, a metal piece that's been hanging in your garden or out by your pool or something that maybe has more of a sentimental value and you want to try to save this, maybe this is helpful for you. I want to make these nice and shiny and bright and shimmery because I am going to hang them back on the pool deck. So I'm going to be using all metallic paints, specifically the color shift paints. They're really beautiful and get some really good shine to them. And then also just some regular other metallic paints that I randomly have around. And I'm going to start by just giving them a layer of just plain old acrylic paints. That way I don't have to do as many layers with the metallic paints since they are a little more expensive. So for the turtle, I'm just gonna do him in the Christmas green apple barrel acrylic paint. I'm gonna do two coats on him and just paint him up just to give him a nice solid base. That way when I do, again, put the metallics on top that it covers a lot easier without me having to use as much. For the fish, I'm going to do him in yellow and blue. So again, just pulling out some acrylic paints, painting them in the colors and tones that I want just to give it a nice base. And then for the lizard, I decided to go with purple and yellow. So I did two coats on each of the animals and then I was ready to get out my fun metallic um, and color shift paints. So I'm going to be using um, multiple different tones on these. For the turtle, let's start back with him. I'm just using a darker green to coat all of him to give him a nice good layer make him shiny and shimmery and then i'm going to be using a lighter more like lime green just on his shell to lighten that up a bit and what i'm doing is i'm mixing it with that same um, dark color green that i used before that way it's not such a huge contrast and i'm not fully mixing the paints together i'm just kind of like swirling them together to where it's kind of streaky and i'm just kind of like rough painting it on there i'm not trying to make sure that it's all blended away i want those different colors and textures to come out because a turtle shell typically does have multiple colors and texture and all kinds of stuff going on and then around the edge of the shell i'm just really um hitting it pretty lightly with the brush i mean a thicker coat of paint but that way it leaves some of those um, like crevices, the darker green, and just gives you a little bit more dimension. While that is drying, I decided to move on and go ahead and start working on the fish. Again, I pulled out my yellow color shift and I'm gonna give him a nice healthy coat on the yellow and then I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna come in with some blue and color all of his fins and really make those colors pop. From there, obviously the same thing with my lizard. I'm going in with that yellow that I just used 
on his legs and his tail, and then I'm gonna do purple for his whole body. These color shift paints are so beautiful. They're nice and thick, so they give really good coverage, and they are just gorgeous once you um, kind of move things around and the light starts moving on them. You just get all, again, what it says is color shift. You just get all these different tones of color showing up, and I'm really excited to see the sun hitting them and popping them off the pool. I'm gonna let all of those bases dry and I'm gonna go in and add detail on all of the different ones. I'm gonna kind of stick with polka dot theme. Polka? Is that how you say it? Who knows? Um, a polka dot theme with all of them, kind of make them all come together. So with the turtle, I'm gonna be using some, like a bronzy gold color and adding in a little bit of dots around on his legs and things, um, on his little head. And then for the fish, I'm going to do some blue, the same blue from the fins and kind of dot him up a little bit just randomly. I'm doing some bigger ones, some little small ones. And then also with the lizard, um, and as you can see with the lizard, I'm going to do opposite. So on the legs that are yellow, I did take a little bit of a dry brush of that same purple because I didn't want it to be super contrasty. I wanted you to be able to see the yellow legs, but still make his whole body match. So I did a dry brush of that purple once the yellow was fully dry on the legs just to hit it just enough to where you can see that it has that purple tint, but you can still tell that the legs are yellow. Um, and then once that dried, I did those polka dots. So on the body, I did yellow polka dots and on the legs and arms, I did the purple polka dots. I think they are super, super cute. And all that's left is to add some eyes. So I just painted with um, just some white chalk paint for the eyes um just where i wanted them to be and then i did use some metallic black to do their pupils and of course we want to add a little gleam of light and so i just dotted their eyes to give it a little pop of um as if the light were shining in their eyes they're super cute for the lizard i did add a little eyelid i didn't do that for the other ones maybe i should have maybe i shouldn't whatever Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, but I think these are super, super cute. Now, if you don't want to use the metallic paints and you just want to use what you have on hand, um, you can just use acrylic paint. That's just fine. Just make sure you seal it. So with these, I'm going to be using, um, I didn't do it in this video because I don't actually have a satin or like a glossy finish, but I'm going to be using the Rust-Oleum 2X um, and all I have on hand is a matte finish, but I want to make sure these are shimmery and shiny. So I want to use a glossy finish on this. If you just want, you know, like a regular no metallic paint, you paint it up however you want and then just hit it with that glossy finish and it's still going to give you that shimmer and that shine that you're looking for without having to use the metallic paints. Um, I'm going to hang these again back up on my pool deck, but I am so pleased with how these turned out. This Rust-Oleum spray really, really worked great. It was super easy to paint over. Obviously it's black, so it did take a couple coats, but I think it looks, I mean, brand new. That's the whole point, right? To make them look brand new. Um, again, the back is coated too, so that's protected as well. So I'll be able to get many more years of use out of these instead of having to throw them away and go buy new. So I'm really happy and pleased with it. I have nothing but good things to say about this. Um, if I see that down the road, you know, this didn't last or something is wonky, I'll update in the description. But it's got good reviews out of me. I am very thrilled to have a video for you guys this week. Please let me know in the comments below which which one, which one of the animals are your favorite? I don't know. I love all of them. Um, so yeah, let me know which one is your favorite. Let me know if this video was helpful. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content. Again, I'm so excited to have a video for you. I'm just so sorry life has been crazy lately, but I am doing my best to keep up and to provide content for you guys. And I'm hoping to kind of get back in the swing of things soon. Um, if you're new, consider subscribing to my channel. We are growing and I really would love for you to be a part of it. Thankful for you guys. I'm going to take you in for a closer look and I'll see you next time.